the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So invariably, uh, an Ash Wednesday won't go by without somebody asking that very relevant question. If we read that gospel about not showing our faith in public, about not going out and parading that we've been to church, uh, that we're truly are humble, therefore we have ashes on our forehead, why is the first thing that we do after that uh, go and smudge uh, charcoal ashes on our forehead? Why? I have been reading uh, Richard War's daily meditation over the last several days, uh, and it has been focusing me on the answer to that question and on the paradox uh, that really engages us during this Lenten season. Uh, we heard in the uh, uh, epistle, Paul talking about those paradoxes uh, in his journey, and we have one major paradox. We don't matter all that much, and we matter more than we can possibly ever know or imagine. And Lent is about balancing and getting beneath both of those truths. A story I've shared before, and as I think about it, I get to a different place on it. Uh, it's a story of a young girl who's incredibly excited for Mother's Day. Uh, they've been doing um, ceramics in her, her class, and uh, she has been working on this Mother's Day present for well over a month uh, because there was, the, um, there was the shaping of it, um, and, 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 and um, there was the... Uh, the the firing of it, then there was the painting of it, then there was the glazing of it, and she had been talking about it uh, and thinking about it and waiting for the moment she could present this incredible treasure to her mom uh, for weeks on end. And she was excited. The day was finally there, and mom and dad came to school um, uh, for a Mother's Day program, and they were going to the classroom, and she ran ahead of them because she couldn't wait, and she grabbed uh, her piece of ceramic that she'd been waiting so long to give to her mother, uh, and in her exuberance, she stumbled, and it crashed and hit the ground, and there wasn't a moment of silence between the thud and shattering of, of, uh, of porcelain and the tears and wailing in her voice. Um, and the dad, trying to uh, make it all go away, make it okay, sweeps her up and says, it doesn't matter. And the mom, seeing the look on her face, grabs her and says, yes, it does matter. It absolutely does matter. And you know what? I think both are true. There is no magic in those shards of porcelain. There is nothing in uh, that porcelain that isn't in the spirit that went in to make it. The love that went into it, the care, the intention, that's not in the porcelain. Uh, that's imbued all around it. The same is true with us. We have this treasure in earthen jars. But the earthen jars are not the treasure. Sometimes we spend too much of our time focused on the treasure, thinking that's what gives our life value and not on what's inside of it. You know, I brought this out uh, for our children, and I said, well, what is this? Um, it's actually even harder now than it was earlier, but it's a slice of bread. It's a slice of bread. It is no more than a slice of bread. To a child who hasn't eaten in a few days, this is everything. This is their deepest longing to somebody who reached out and extended this, to somebody who has been denied food. This is solidarity. This is love. This is God's hand and heart in the world. This is the assurance that somebody cares about me. This is hope. This is the daily bread that we hear about in the Lord's Prayer. If we take it up to the altar and we remember that story into becoming, this becomes something even more. This becomes hope. This gets filled with love and with God's divine presence. This becomes what can sustain us through anything in life. This simple piece of bread. We don't have that much trouble believing that God can get in this bread. We don't have that much trouble believing God can be in that beautiful mountain vista when we are hiking in the Blue Ridge Mountains. believing that God can be in that newborn child that we hold for the first time. 
But sometimes we struggle to believe that God could be so fully in us. That we can matter that much. I think that's part of the story. Figuring out what it is about us that matters. And I think we get it wrong more often than not. If I could go back and talk to the former self, uh, my former person, and I could go back to middle school and say, you don't have to wear those silly outfits that you think are so cool and cinch your pants, uh, wear your uh, the suspenders hanging down. Pay twice as much because there's an insignia on your shirt that makes you feel like you might be worth something. You aren't less than because you got cut from your team. You are no more and no less important because you got a grade that disappointed you, because a girl didn't give you the attention you had hoped that you would be given, because somebody who was also feeling less than said you were less. I wish I could go back and tell that person that is not why they matter and that none of that is true, that they are a beloved child of God. They are dust that God took the time and the intention to breathe life into. They matter. They matter more than anything. The truth of this season is that we matter. And it is the parts of us that are imbued in this bread, uh, in the Eucharist, and somehow we are to realize that we aren't just receiving a little sampling of God's presence. We are the body of Christ. We are God's hands and feet and love and compassion and presence in the world. And God cared enough to make us that way. And we matter. So that ash cross reminds us of that paradox. The parts of us that we spend a whole lot of time worrying about, the size of our house, how big a congregation we have tonight, uh, how many people are on our rolls, uh, how important the people at the club think we are, whatever it is that we think is important probably isn't. But we are probably infinitely more important than any of us have ever been able to <clears throat> See that bread broken and you realize that God is in that bread. Realize that God is in each of us. And that cross reminds us that we're dust. That we're really not much more than molecules vibrating. We are dust. But we are bound together by the most powerful force in the world. The presence of God. The love of God. The potential of God. The hope of God. on the TV and I realize that it's probably one of the most important lessons for me to realize I'm not as important as I think I am. And being right and being first and being best is nowhere near as important as those moments in my life where I have known clearly that I am dust, filled with the greatest substance of the universe, the power of God, and the greatest interactions I've had than when I've seen that truth in others. So that cross, made out of dust, reminds us that we are dust and love, perfectly put together to be Christ's hands and heart in the world. And so this life, live into that paradox. Strip down those things that you think matter about yourself so that you can be filled with the truth that you matter more than you ever imagined. And the world needs that. Amen.